So, you read all over the internet about people and they run their car on water and hydrogen fuel cells and so on. You're running your car on... Hydrogen. You can't run a car on water. But you're using water. Right. You use water as the source material. You run electricity through it mm -hmm. and it breaks it down into hydrogen and oxygen and then you can burn the hydrogen. Alright, so you found a way to store a lot more hydrogen in hydrate. The equivalent of a full tank of gas you want to fill up your car, how much hydrate do you need? Well, I'll show you. No way. Yeah, that's the volume it takes to store enough hydrogen to propel this car close to 400 miles. Just about what it gets running on a full tank of gas. Wow. And it's a lot safer than gasoline. Really? Yeah, these tanks can be shot at with incendiary bullets or cut in half with a chainsaw and you could throw a match on them, they just smolder like a cigarette and you can't say that about a gas tank. Now if you stored hydrogen and just compressed gas in a tank, it would certainly explode, yeah. catch on fire. Here only the hydrogen that you need is released from the tank. When the tank's heated, it produces hydrogen and the car burns it. So there's never much gaseous hydrogen in the system at any given time. Wow. So these are the these are the fuel lines? No, what are these? Those no, are these are the this provides power to the heater in the tank and also reads back the temperature of the tank. Why is that important? Well when you apply heat to hydride it releases hydrogen. So as oh. power is applied to here, it heats the hydride, right. and then the gas comes out, the big hose is on the end. Now you have four hoses, do they all mix into one big hose or yeah. something? Because you can only get hydrogen out of hydride at a certain rate with a certain temperature. And a single tank, you can't get it out at the volume you need. So you really just split it into four smaller units, heat them separately, and it works just fine. Okay, now behind me, Bob is getting ready to blow something up. Bob is blowing up water. Well, okay, he's not blowing up water because as he said, to say you're powering your car on water is the same thing as saying if you're running your car on gasoline, you're powering your car on dinosaurs, and we know that's not the case. Um, this is what? This is a Hoffman apparatus. And it's used to? produce hydrogen and oxygen from water. For fun, just because it's cool. Well, if you just have a use for hydrogen and oxygen or for demonstration purposes, it works just perfect. All you gotta do is fill it with water. That's just regular water, right? Well, actually water with a little citric acid, potassium hydroxide, anything like that. The more conductive you make the water, the faster hydrogen will come out. And each one of these sides is supposed to be hydrogen and oxygen? Right, one will be Hydrogen will bubble up out of one, and oxygen will bubble up out of the other. Remember, water is H2O. Right. So when we break the bond of water apart, we'll get twice as much hydrogen gas as we do oxygen. Oh, so what happens to the water? It just goes away. Right. It gets converted so, into... So each one of these tubes, the water just goes down, but what's left is the gas? Right. And there'll be more on this side? Yes. And that's the hydrogen side. Exactly. And that's the negative. Oh, so it matters which way you hook these up. So you got to hook up positive to what is... The positive is well, going to make... The... Positive will make the oxygen. And oh. the negative will make oh, no way. the hydrogen. Okay. So we've just connected it there. Right. And just by turning it on, you can see bubbles start pouring up out of there. It's seven up. <laughs> kind of. So those bubbles are, well, they're not the same. So these are hydrogen bubbles and those are oxygen, oxygen bubbles. bubbles. Right. And there's, this is whiter. There's more of them. Right. I'll, you can see it's really. Why is there more? Oh, H2. Two. Two. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. There's twice as much. Hey, that actually makes sense. So I'll close it off so it saves, right. seals the gas in. And right. then you'll see it'll start filling up. Oh, we could, we don't have to go away overnight if this will do it while we're watching. Yeah, it'll be relatively quick. And what we'll do mm -hmm. is take a little sample of the hydrogen gas mm -hmm. and light it. Right. And 
you can see. That what just, are I mean? What are these? You just have electrical current going to a, a piece, it's a of, piece foil. of Well, it's a piece of platinum foil, and the reason you need platinum in there is because that's it's very corrosive to a metal for electrolysis to occur. I mean, it's really ripping mm -hmm. the atoms of the metal apart, but mm -hmm. Platinum is highly resistant to corrosion. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a slow method. Right. And, you know, it, it consumes a fair amount of electricity. Now, mm -hmm. if the electricity is being produced from solar panels or a mm -hmm. wind generator, it doesn't cost you anything, so who cares? But still, mm -hmm. you don't want to wait, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours to refill mm -hmm. a vehicle. You want something that can produce hydrogen at a fairly quick rate. So, let's go ahead and extract some of this. Okay. Look at that. Wow! So there's power of hydrogen. You see, just from water, something exploded. So this is the same thing that was inside the lab. Yeah, that was a small tabletop model. This is a large industrial version, essentially, uh, which connects right to the water main. Right. And produces a much higher volume. The water of main. Your the water garden line. hose. Right. Yeah, garden hose. You can plumb it in like you connect your you know dishwasher or just connect to a garden hose right and um, it's powered by uh, either a solar array solar panels mm -hmm. which convert Sun into electricity mm -hmm. or uh, a wind turbine takes the wind converts it to electricity or any other way but the idea is just to use complete green energy ideally I like to run this one on solar New Mexico gets a lot of sunlight so mm -hmm. That's really all there is to it. You connect it to a water line, plug it into your solar panel, and open the water line. You right. know it starts producing hydrogen, and when it has a sufficient quantity uh -huh. in there, you let the hydrogen out, and you just leave it plugged into your car overnight. Now, this is the same as those other two tubes, right? Right. Hydrogen and oxygen, or right. whichever one is. And the oxygen we have no use for, so we just vent off into the air. And the hydrogen. Well, it's very nice of you. I'm sure the Earth would be proud. Well, it could use all the <laughs> oxygen it can get. So right. the uh, hydrogen right. using uh, the water pressure is compressed right. into the hydride tanks. The water pressure, like a syringe, it pushes it right into the tank. Exactly. Well, there's the standard gasoline fill, but also there's a hydrogen in it, which you just click on, leave it on overnight. And as the generator makes hydrogen, it compresses it in there at a nice slow rate. And the tanks become full over a period of about eight hours or so. There are little points here and there that do have to be addressed. I mean, when it comes right down to it, you don't want fuel tanks inside the vehicle. This is a prototype, so ideally, eventually, you'd want the tanks outside just like a fuel tank is. The second thing is you're dealing with an unusual gas. Hydrogen not only is lighter than air but also it burns with an invisible flame and is completely odorless which is not a good thing. Now propane is odorless too. They add a uh, you know that pretty mm -hmm. strong scent to it um, and you can't really do that with hydrogen because if you add any kind of chemical to it, the hydride has a problem storing it. It can poison the hydride and lose its ability to hold hydrogen. So that's something that needs to be addressed. If you have a hydrogen leak and somehow the gas is getting in the car, you'd never know. And the, it could accumulate in the car. You go to light a cigarette, there could be an explosion in a case like that. So um, you need things like uh, right. a hydrogen gas detector, so it'll let you know if there is a hydrogen leak. But I mean, it's it's still an extremely safe system. Why can't everybody do this? I mean, gas is you know, going on five dollars a gallon. Right. It's oh. terrible. The whole country is falling apart. We're you know killing people all over the world for oil. And and this, you're driving a car on this, right. and you can do it, and you can convert any other car. Yeah, unless I'm sure there are cars that have some technical right. problems. But yeah, essentially, well, any car can be converted. The whole problem to it is the material in the hydride, the hydride itself, right. one of the main components of it is classified as a weapon material. 
and it can only be used in thermonuclear weapons. And because, even though it's not a dangerous right. material, explosive, or anything by itself, right. just because it's used within those nuclear weapons right. that are obviously secret and the components thereof, but um, because it's used in those, it can't be used for any other civilian purposes. So, you can't even purchase the material. No. Which is why we had to make it. You made it? Yeah, we made it. But and isn't isn't that, don't you need big particle accelerators and yeah, things? Yeah, so that was the, the one loophole. You can make the material, you can't buy it, so... Where's the particle? You have a particle accelerator? Yeah, so all you have to do is build a particle accelerator and you can make all the hydride you need. The biggest thing that stands in the way right now is just getting that material inside the tank, that hydride material. Right. And the, and the reason you can't is because... It's a weapon material. But there's nothing dangerous about it. No, no, it's it just won't used blow in up. a weapon. Right. Well, beryllium's used in a weapon, too. You know, it's right. like... Basically, this whole thing boils down to how you store the hydrogen. So we found a metal. We have a material that we can store the hydrogen in. We have a material we can safely store hydrogen in. And a sufficient quantity to replace the gas tank on a car. So we can provide enough hydrogen to drive a car as you normally would. Use green energy to make the hydrogen, either solar or wind power. There's a medium to store it in. That's it. Both problems are handled. All the other little bells and whistles can be taken care of in time, but the basic system works. It has for a long time. Wow. That's it. Yeah. If we had just a fraction of what the oil companies are, are wallowing <laughs> in right the, now. If we had the budget of one day in Iraq, this entire system would be available to everybody. <laughs>